This is Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. I'm going to get with them. Welcome to the best uh, 15 minutes or so in the universe. It's Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. And uh, Gary filling in for uh, Mark Garrigus, or me filling in for Mark Garrigus. I don't even know how it works, but uh, Mark's uh, caught up in court, so that leaves uh, me and Gary to uh, take care of your um, legal needs. Gary's got a plethora of stories he's been working on and going back and forth with Mark on. So why don't we start there, Gary? Yeah, I mean, there's no sor- no shortage of stories today. The big one from today that you may not even be aware of yet, Ace, is a lawsuit filed by uh, former NFL head coach Brian Flores, who's currently unemployed. And he, he issued a, or he filed a class action lawsuit alleging that well, basically, on behalf of every black head coach, coordinator, and GM, saying that he was forced to sit through an interview after a team, the New York Giants, had already made a decision on their head coach. And in his lawsuit, he shows text messages from Bill Belichick to him, congratulating him on getting the job, then admitting, no, I fucked that up. They're hiring the other guy named Brian. Sorry about that. And that was four days before his interview. So he's claiming that their interview was purely to satisfy the Rooney rule, and therefore he's filing on behalf of everyone. And his lawsuit starts, uh, as this class action complaint is filed on the first day of Black History Month, we honor the leaders that fought so hard to help break down racial barriers of injustice, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Frederick Douglass, Jackie Robinson, and Mamie Till, only to name a few. None coaches, though, right? I don't think so. We'll look into that. Um, so they have to fulfill this thing where they go, they look at X amount of minority coaches and it's black, but it'll get into everything at some point, right? It'll get into all minorities and then it'll get into women, I'm guessing. And then it'll get gay and bi-curious and everything We're going you have to interview X amount before you make your decision. And so what teams are doing, I guess, is they're going, well, we technically have to interview these guys. Well, we already made our decision on this guy. So we're going to hire the other guy. Maybe he's a white guy, but Brian he could, De- also, could also be a black guy. <laughs> Brian DeBull, as it turns out, is a white gentleman. And so Belichick just screwed up because the name was too close. According to the quote here, let's see. Uh, he says something to the effect of, I fucked that up. I misread what I was sent. It sounds like they're giving it to Brian DeBull. Sorry about that. And they were going to give it to Brian DeBull, but they said, well, let's still interview the black guy because we got to check that box. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely a, a requirement based on that rule. Right. And this, by the way, when you make rules like this, this is what ends up happening. People end up going, it, it, by the way, this is, this is the person that is you know 118th Iroquois Indian pretending they have a bunch of heritage in the Iroquois tribe to try to get the gig over at the faculty at Harvard like you are going to get people to do these things with regulations that are race based now I don't know how you avoid them because you can go well that's a good idea But just keep in mind, if you ever say SAT scores for Japanese students getting into UCLA is going to be one score and Native Americans going to be another score, do not be surprised if a lot of Japanese students are trying to identify as Native American. And don't be surprised when professional football teams do stunts like this. Because this is how human beings work and human behavior works. Absolutely. I'm very excited to talk to Mark about this a little bit more because I find it interesting that he filed it as a class action on behalf of all of the other coaches in the league. I find it interesting that he filed it in the Southern District of New York. And it's apparently also interesting that because the Giants are the team in question and they play in New Jersey, there is an anti-discrimination law in New Jersey that may come into play and be very advantageous for him. What percentage of teams, when they're interviewing a head coach, let's say pre the Rooney law, they know who they want to coach their team? I mean, 
they've studied the game film, pardon the pun. They know what these guys have done, who they've played for, they uh, who they coach for, quarterbacks coach for the Patriots, what have you. They, it's all one big, big incestuous family. They know exactly who they want. So then what, what ends up happening is you have to interview the black coaches if, in fact, one of the black coaches isn't one that you want. You have to essentially have them waste a day and fly out to Tampa or waste a couple of days and go through this window dressing charade of an interview because you've already decided who you've wanted, but the league mandates that you, you do this now. He alleges that in a previous interaction on a, in a different year, he was uh, forced to wait over an hour for John Elway and the rest of the Denver brass who showed up late and hung over for an interview that was clear he was not going to get it. Well, what percentage of NFL franchises have no idea, you know, if they're going to bring in three coaches to interview, don't know who they're going with before the interview. Now, it's going to be some it's going to be a small percentage. They know who they want. I mean, it certainly would seem like it's a fraternity and these front office guys are in constant communication with one another. And, and you know, it's not it's not a talent pool of, of thousands. I mean, it's a small community of people who are head football coaches. Right. So you're going to I'll bet you a lot of black coaches have wasted a lot of mileage going to places where they were never going to get the job. And then all that does is sort of deepen the weird racial divide because now you're flying these people in under the auspices of of a fair shot at a coaching job via an interview, although the decisions have already been made. It, it, it is interesting that by the fault of a coach that's not that was not really involved in it is how this is coming to light. It's it's interesting that Belichick's mistake is how he was able to file this lawsuit. But it's very big news. We'll be following it carefully, and we may even have to have uh, Jimmy Neutron, Dan Lust, come back on and, and give his assessment. I, I couldn't book him for today because he's understandably a little busy. But uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's a story we will watch. Another I, one. I uh, hope Gruden sues the shit out of the NFL. For oh, he is, and the, wrote it. he is, and the NFL tried to get it dismissed, uh, saying that he should have no expectation of privacy with his emails. He sent offensive messages to at least six people. I don't know what that means. And the leaked emails didn't just hurt Gruden. They also hurt the NFL. So that is the latest on that case. Well, the NFL didn't have to leak them, but all right. Yeah, absolutely. Um also in the news, obviously, Gavin Newsom, who was seen watching some football. Ugh. I agree. Do you have thoughts? I, it, it, there is no what thoughts could you have about a person that doesn't have thoughts? He's whatever, whoever, whenever. He's not a person. He's just this thing that puts on a blazer and shows up. You know, he, I don't think he gives two shits about the Rams. He's probably just showing up or the 49ers, or whoever he claims. He doesn't know who... He doesn't have... He's a fucking pinata that's filled with styrofoam peanuts. There's just nothing there. And so my point is, is don't listen to him. You know, when he's talking about, well, I wore the mask, but then I, I took the mask off in between sips. And then uh, Larry Bird... Who was that? Magic uh, Johnson. Magic Johnson. That's right. Magic Johnson wanted to get a picture with me. Did did Magic want to get a picture with him, or did he want to get a picture with Magic? Uh, yeah, I would say I'm probably guessing not. he wanted to get a picture with Magic. So I, I took the mask off, and then later on I sat down, and but I had the mask in my hand, but I was very judicious. You're very ju judicious about what? Having the mask in your fucking palm? It's not his fault. It's the idiots who vote for him. It's the people that live in California. You fucking retards disgust me. Well, you fucking disgust me. This guy is such a sociopath. And by the way, these are the same people that hate Trump with a white hot passion. You want to know the difference between Donald Trump and Gavin Newsom? Nothing. They're the same dude. They're just on the other side of the aisle. Whatever you think of Trump, I guarantee He's more authentic than Gavin Newsom. You may think that's an insane comment. I've met both of them. Trump is much more authentic a human being, no matter how much you disagree with him. Gavin Newsom is whatever he needs to be, whenever, whatever. Does he believe in masks? He doesn't believe in anything. He doesn't give a fuck. 
Well, here's one thing that he believes in. Three years ago, he placed a moratorium on executions, and he's now moving to dismantle death row by moving all condemned inmates to other prisons within two years. The goal is to turn the section at San Quentin State Prison into, quote, a positive... An opportunity zone. Positive healing environment. A gender-neutral toy aisle for kids that are struggling with their sexuality. It's a a what? A a positive positive healing environment. He's just, he's just all, look, he realizes he's flanked. Look, if this guy moved to Florida and ran for governor, he'd be wearing a American flag on his lapel. He'd be talking about freedom. He'd be talking about beefing up the border. He wouldn't be talking about getting rid of capital punishment. He's just talk about he's he's surrounded by nut job fruitcakes, and that's the language that he speaks. He doesn't believe any of this shit. He fucking grew up with the Getty family. The Getty oil family, the richest fucking family in the world who produced they extract oil from the ground and sell it to people. Who, who love to burn it and then send it back up in the atmosphere. He has no beliefs. He's a fucking sociopath that fooled dumb people, which is you guys for voting for his ass. Ugh. And now what? Oh, all right. Good. Let's, let's uh, get rid of death row because that was affecting American families. But uh, no thoughts on homeless or gas prices or house prices or education. It's all just weird window dressing that is somehow satisfying. It's satisfying to people. That's the real question. Why is it satisfying? You know what I mean? Like if you if you were in a house and your house was a shit show and it had vermin in it and infestation of fleas and rats and, and everything else and some guy came along and he was talking about um, I'm going to I'm going to hire a calligrapher and we're going to change the numbers on the street address. that's painted on the curb instead of these block letters. We're going with calligraphy. Would you go like, oh, tell me more. Or would you go, what the fuck are you talking about? The house is fucking filled with rats and vermin. I got the bubonic plague in there. Yeah, but I got a calligrapher and he's going to paint. The address on the curb, but he's going to use calligraphy. He, he's got he wears tights. He has a quill. It's not a. It's not these guys are using stencils and Krylon. This guy is a quill, a golden quill, and he's going to paint. He's going to use his calligraphy. And I, why is that attractive? Why you, you know my mom would go like, hey, he's using calligraphy. It's like you live in a fucking house that there's homeless people flopped everywhere. What do you give a fuck about the curb? He's a calligrapher. <laughs> that that's that's a, that's what my mom would say and then you'd go oh there's this other guy his name is larry elder he'd like to come in and take over the house does he know a calligrapher no 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 he wants to get rid of the rats and the roaches and the bubonic plague inside the i heard that guy was a racist he's black she can still be a racist i think anyway this guy's got a calligrapher that's how my mom thinks That's how 63% of Californians think. They're so fucking dumb. I just don't understand it as a somewhat recent homeowner who's still learning about property taxes. I mean, I just, just insanity. It's insanity. And he's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to double the state tax and we're going to have universal health care for all illegals. And my mom's like, oh, that's good. The guy with the calligrapher wants to help the illegals. Jesus Christ. It's it's so weird. It's also it's also like it's so yucky to me. Why isn't it this way? Why don't people see through it? He's smiling, he's got his mask on, he's got his mask off. He doesn't believe in masks at all. He's doing whatever he thinks the calligrapher would like him to do. And that's put a mask on. Fine. Just fucking drop it then. You don't believe in masks. You go, into, you go to a packed stadium and you take pictures without your mask and it's not the picture, it's when you're leaning back and it's not when you're sipping the water and it's not when you're eating. You're sitting there without a mask watching the game. Good, you don't believe in it. 
You don't believe in it. Fine. Let's swap out the uh, fucking mask for a yarmulke. <laughs> well, what, what I'm saying is, is the guy's wearing a yarmulke, right? And you go, oh, man, that guy's a, he's a devout Jew. Look at that guy. He's he he loves his yarmulke. He's um, he's very he's very devout. He's a very devout Jew. And then you had a nanny cam in the room. And then as soon as everyone left, he just pulled the yarmulke off and used it as a coaster and put a fucking beer on it. Would you go, that guy's a devout Jew? Or would you go, he wants you to think he's a devout Jew? The latter. Because the second this guy gets out of wherever he thinks it's harm's way, off comes the mask. Off comes the yarmulke. Good. He's not Hasidic. He doesn't believe that. It's not his beliefs. When you believe something, I guarantee Ben Shapiro takes a shower with a yarmulke on. He probably <laughs> swims laps with a yarmulke on. He sleeps with a yarmulke on. He, if, if, he, if, he, if he skated a half pipe, he would have a fucking yarmulke on. Because he believes. Gavin Newsom puts it on, but as soon as the people with the cameras leave, it goes right off. Becomes a fucking coaster. So he doesn't believe. And now he's going to lecture us all on the importance of the yarmulke. A metaphor I never thought we'd get to on Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. All right, let's all bring right. it home. I'm disgusted. No One way. more happy note to go out on. A new, uh, a new um, campaign to recall George Gascon in L.A. as the DA has been approved. They need 500,000 signatures by del- July. We'll keep an eye on it for you guys. So, till next time. Adam Carolla for Gary Smith saying mahalo. Thanks for listening to Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. Stay tuned for more bonus episodes coming soon.